Uh, in terms of the shows that, that really resonated with me, fall 2016 was a really special season for, for me. As the, the Lowe's director, we mounted simultaneously Donald Sultan's Disaster Pictures, Disaster Paintings, excuse me, show. Um, and those are works that have been around for a while, but really hadn't gotten their due. They're massive, they're 10 by 10, sometimes um, in diptych form. And they're made out of tar with these, this very brilliant yellow paint. And as the name suggests, it is about disasters. Now they were painted before 9-11, but they certainly um, conjured for many New Yorkers in particular, 9-11. It, there were quite a few um, uh, uh, conflagrations that, that Donald depicted and um, you know, rivers that had run dry, Venice, I think, without water, things like that that I really thought was, I thought I, the work is beautiful, um, but also very, very powerful, important and topical. And at the same time, we also opened Titus Kafar's Vesper Project, which is a very complicated installation. It literally has part of a Southern New England um, farmhouse, the relics or the remains thereof that we mounted in the gallery, in the main gallery with some adjacent or complementary artworks by Titus, um, both paintings and sculptures in, in the flanking wings. And that I think was really special, not only because of the, the sheer wow factor of that project, it really was phenomenal um, as an aesthetic experience, but also the importance of the work itself. And it's got a long complicated backstory that I would encourage any viewer who's interested to, to Google. Again, it's the Vesper Project. And of course, Titus has just gone from strength to strength. He was already um, doing very well in 2016, but he's since gone on to do uh, some incredible things, not only winning a Guggenheim, but starting uh, a very uh, important and impactful organization in New Haven, where he's based, called Next Haven, NXT H, uh, HVN. So those two who um, projects really resonated. What I love about my job is that every show is different. Um, it is hard sometimes to be the only curator um, in addition to directing. And of course we rely on guest curators as well, both faculty members with expertise um, as well as outside guest curators. But um, day to day I'm it. And that can be quite challenging, but it's also extremely interesting because I'm thinking about learning about everything from Japanese Netsuki to um, to contemporary to contemporary glass to um, an installation like Titus's. You know, in terms of perfect shows to have right now, um, <laughs> there's no shortage of fodder for perfect shows um, with the multiple entrenched and intertwined crises that we are all living through but we we do feel fortunate even though we're not we're only open right now to faculty un faculty and students for academic purposes we will start opening up to faculty and students for non-academic reasons very soon but we have had on view since february um, a very significant jacob lawrence show history life labor which features his pivotal suites um, the Great Migration is not included, but the other suites are there, including John Brown and thinking about social justice, equity, anti-racism. Um, it's, it's very important for, for us to have that work on view right now. And we're thrilled that a, a, donor, donor who, a donor who's new to us, actually based in Texas, uh, is donating to us a copy of the John Brown suite. So what we have on view right now is the edition uh, lent by, uh, organi it, the show was organized by SCAD and the suite we have came from the, um, the I'm, I'm gonna call it the Knight Foundation, but it's not our Knight Foundation. It's the, the J, uh, that's why it's the Lawrence Knight Foundation or Knight Lawrence, um, his, he and his wife um, were the, were, is, sorry, I'm losing losing my thread here. But anyway, the, we're getting an identical suite of the John Brown series that will be added to our permanent collection, uh, which again we're we're very happy about. Not only because of the aesthetic quality of Lawrence as an artist, without qualifiers as an artist, but also because of the content um, and to to educate people about who John Brown, the white abolitionist, was and why his work mattered, and um, the work is ongoing.